Hello, horror fans. Welcome back to Jay vs. Horror. I'm your host, Jay Wall, and today, guys, we're going to do something a little bit fun, and I can't wait to hear the comments out there from you guys on this one. It's four sitcom characters who could totally be horror movie villains, and I know that there's probably a ton more, and that's why I can't wait to hear your guys' comments on who you think would make a great horror movie villain. With that being said, let's get started, guys. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And at number four, I have Rose from Two and a Half Men. Rose is a highly intelligent, deceiving, and manipulative woman. Though quite obsessive, she also seems to be very quirky. And that slight quirkiness or weirdness is dangerous because it makes her a little bit endearing. And we forget that she is a total stalker psychopath, right? She's after Charlie Harper, played by Charlie Sheen on the show, and she eventually ends up getting him to marry her, only for Charlie to go on and be killed by a train in Paris, but then we find out about four years later that that didn't happen, that Rose has had Charlie in her basement in a well this entire time. So it's pretty easy to see that when I look at Rose, I see one name, and that name is Annie Wilkes. This is a total misery situation. It actually becomes... A misery situation you could say there's a little bit of buffalo bill in there too because she keeps charlie in a well for four years and to be honest guys you could argue that rose is even more dangerous than annie because she was successful at what she did she stalked charlie for years until she wore him down into actually marrying her and then keeping him held captive for four years so she was way more successful at her venture into love than annie wilkes was so that's why at number four we have Rose Harper. At number three, Barney Stinson, How I Met Your Mother. Barney's an interesting character. He kind of seems like a throwback to an 80s sitcom character. He reminds me of Dan from Night Court a great deal. Barney is a womanizer and he's also super anal retentive. Like this guy, he's one of those people that would totally freak out if you went into their house and touched something that belonged to them. Pretty much everything about Barney's character says pretentious New York douchebag, right? And so when I think of Barney, the name that comes to my mind is Patrick Bateman. He is totally the American psycho, right? Now they tried to change Barney's character quite a bit towards the end of the show. They tried to make him a feeling, loving person who was looking for more significant things in life than just one night stands. And to be honest, I feel like that whole character, the womanizer funny guy is probably done in sitcoms just because of the culture that we live in today and i'm not upset about that at all because to be honest that character is completely played out right i always thought barney was a little more interesting than some of those run-of-the-mill characters though because he did have a lot of background story and he had daddy issues instead of mommy issues and all in all i could always just see barney having like a torture chamber built into his high-rise new york apartment so that's why I have Barney Stinson from How I Met Your Mother at number three. At number two, I have Dwight Schrute from The Office. And Dwight is quite a strange duck. And when I think about Dwight, the name that comes to my head is, of course, Norman Bates. He really does have that feel to me. He owns a farm on the outside of town that it was once owned by his mother, who is now deceased, but is supposed to be buried in the east field but that doesn't seem like much of a problem for Dwight since in one episode we're told that the suit he is wearing is the suit his uncle was buried in and he dug it up to put it back on so he's not opposed to grave digging and he just has this really weird sense about him he's one of those guys where it's like yeah there's something wrong with that guy but beyond that there's something wrong with that guy Dwight actually ends up turning his farm into a bed and breakfast called Shroot farm Bates Motel Shroot Farm I don't think it's a coincidence what do you guys think now originally they were going to keep going with Dwight's story and they were going to have a spinoff called The Farm after The Office ended but it didn't get great ratings I mean they did one episode that was incorporated into the final season of The Office and it just didn't screen well people didn't take to it so we didn't get the farm which would have been interesting but another thing like i said about barney before they tried to do that with dwight too they tried to change his character towards the end of the show and try to make him more human you know less of a robot dwight always seemed to me to be the guy 
who would poison everybody at work, right? He's that guy. Like, he takes it so seriously that you would see him on Investigation Discovery at some point for poisoning everyone in his workplace. And that's why at number two, I have Dwight Schrute from The Office. Moving on, guys. We made it down to our number one. And our number one is pretty obvious. It's Stewie Griffin from Family Guy. And when I think of Stewie, the name that comes to my mind is Hannibal Lecter. And I just can't even fathom how they haven't done an entire Family Guy episode dedicated to Silence of the Lambs. I mean, we've seen them do Star Wars and other things. Cleveland Show did Die Hard. Uh, but Family Guy should definitely do a parody of Silence of the Lambs with Stewie as Hannibal Lecter. I mean, let's be honest. Outside of maybe Cartman, Stewie has done probably the most horrible things to people over the years. He's also obsessed with matricide, which always came across as funny because where someone like Norman Bates kills their mother because of what she's done to them, Stewie just hates his mom. She's not really done anything other than being pretty much a regular mom. But like I said, I think Family Guy can make a great episode out of this. Of course, we have Meg play Clarice, and we have Chris play Buffalo Bill, and then, you know, uh, Lois could be Senator Catherine Martin, and we could have Peter play Jack Crawford. It would just be perfect all the way across the board with Stewie as the face-eating Hannibal Lecter, and that's why I had Stewie Griffin from Family Guy at number one. Now, you may have noticed that while I was talking about Stewie, I mentioned Cartman. And in my mind, Cartman is probably the number one sitcom villain of all time. He's probably the number one TV villain of all time. This kid has done some messed up stuff. He's a little Nazi for one thing. And for another thing, like he cut this one kid's parents up and put them in chili and made him eat them. And he's just done terrible things to Butters hundreds of times over the years. He is a little shit, right? But I couldn't picture Cartman in a horror movie. I couldn't picture what kind of a character he would play in a horror movie. So that's what I'm going to leave up to you guys too. You guys uh, can maybe come up with a perfect type of character that Cartman could play or a perfect type of movie that he could be in as the bad guy. And that's all we got for today guys. I just wanted to stop by and have a little fun. I had this crazy kooky idea of sitcom characters and horror movie villains and I'm always interested to hear what you guys have to say. The way you think what you think would make a great choice for some of these lists that we do and this one I'm really interested to see if you guys can come up with any other really cool sitcom characters that would make great horror movie villains and I know that's a stretch but I know you guys out there have a lot of intelligence and creativity and I know you can do it and with that being said guys we will talk to you the next time we've got something worth talking about bye